Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bart Koppens with another outdoor video. And this time it's early in spring. And today I visited a swamp in the Netherlands. Yes, believe it or not. My country has swamps and I'm going to show you one today. Moths have ridiculously long antennae. Immediately we see something interesting. Very long horn moths. The caterpillars live among fallen leaves from birch and oak and feed on leaf remains. In my country they are very common and often seen in spring. The males tend to form swarms and do pairing rituals during the day when the sun shines. It's kind of hard to film them when they are so active but it's nice to find them in spring. Let's continue guys. Today I'm also looking for butterflies, but this spring has been unusually cold and cloudy. Therefore it has been a terrible season for butterflies so far and it's pretty difficult to find them. I hope warm weather will arrive soon. The person in front of me is my best friend Owen. He is my cameraman behind the scenes. Slowly it's getting nice and swampy. The area is called the Moorputten and it is home to many amphibians and unique butterflies. It consists of a peat bog and there are bridges that help us cross the swamp. Otherwise we would pretty much have to swim at some points. This looks like a bridge, but it's actually a railway that was used almost daily from the year 1890 and beyond. It was an industrial railway that brought resources to factories, for example. Ladies and gentlemen, so this bridge that I'm currently standing on is actually a railway. It was used for quite a while to transport goods. But it has fallen into disrepair and nowadays I guess it functions as a bridge. Just a little piece of history. Unfortunately there's not many butterflies today, which is what I really wanted to show you. But uh, the weather is terrible for butterflies this season. It's dark, it's windy. That's a shame. So I guess I'll show you some history instead. So I came here to uh, look for butterflies, but uh, I think it's a bad idea. This spring has been pretty terrible for butterflies. Thing is, they need sunlight. So um, no shuns sunshine, no butterflies, man. That sucks. At least I can show you now my surroundings. Thanks to my new uh, GoPro. Hey, Owen. You're on YouTube. 
No, I'm <laughs> not going to do. You have to talk English, okay? My viewers are English, Owen. Owen. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay. Okay, let me go. Some of the butterflies you can find here in spring are orange tip butterflies, which are quite common here in the meadows. There are also peacock butterflies on sunny days, as well as the brimstone butterfly, which you may have seen in other videos, and many more species. More importantly, these marshes are the only place in the Netherlands where the scarce Lars Blue, Fengaris Teleus, can be found. The only place and nowhere else in the country there is no other location where I can film it in the Netherlands. Unfortunately for us, this spring has been one of the worst springs ever when it comes to butterfly filming. In fact, this is the coldest spring in 35 years time, which is still older than I am. The days of sunlight we've had have been very scarce and it has been rainy and cloudy for weeks on end. Usually the area is also rich in other wildlife such as frogs, but they have gone into hiding too. Instead, let me tell you about this bridge. The Moerputten Bridge is a former railway bridge near the Dutch city of Zertogenbosch. It spans the peat lake, the Lange Putten. The bridge was built from 1881 until 1887, but was used from 1819 until the year 1972. The Moerputten is a nature reserve, very close to the city of Zertogenbosch, also known as Denbosch. The 118 hectare site is one of the few remaining peat bogs south of the major rivers in the Netherlands. The area consists of many different terrain types. There are hay meadows, reed beds, swamps, open waters and willow thickets. The area has a rich but fragile flora and fauna. You can will find deer, foxes and nice birds such as the water rail, the gargany, the blue throat, the common nightingale, the European stone chat and the tree pipit. A successful attempt has been made in the area to reintroduce the scarred large blue, Fangaris teleus, a species of butterfly extinct in the Belgium and Netherlands. Nowadays, the abundant railway serves as a monument and a bridge that allows us to cross the nature reserve more easily. But soon we are about to arrive to the place I actually came to see. You see behind these swamplands there is a special meadow with a special butterfly species. 
A butterfly species, like I said, is extinct in the Netherlands, but the government has decided to reintroduce them. The habitat of the scarred large blue Fengaris teleus. Ladies and gentlemen, here behind me is what I came for. In this little field behind me is the only place in the Netherlands where you can see a special kind of butterfly. And nowhere else. Only in this direct area. But there is bad news. The weather is terrible. I don't think we're going to see any butterflies today. Which means I will have to redo this video and come back here, maybe when it's warmer, to show you these butterflies. I guess the signs in this meadow betray that this is the place where I need to be. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The area where the Scarge Large Blue was introduced about 25 years ago. And since then, they've managed to sustain a small population here. The ecology of this butterfly, however, is a little bit complicated. The larva of this species feeds on Swangisorba officinalis, or the great burnet plant. Now this plant alone has become pretty uncommon in the Netherlands, which is one of the reasons this butterfly went extinct in the country in the first place. But it gets even more complicated. The young caterpillars live in the flower heads of Sanguisorba officinalis, but the older caterpillars live in ant nests from the genus Myrmica. Yes, the young caterpillars are herbivores on Great Burnett, but the older larvae move onto ant nests and they are predators of the ant brood. When they reach the fourth instar, they fall to the ground and using chemical and even auditory mimicry, the butterfly larva becomes accepted by the ant colony as one of their own. And the feeds and the ants, they feed and care for it as if it one of, was one of their own. Once inside the ant nest, the caterpillar starts eating the larva of the ants. It is very much a predator on ant larva. To make this even more complicated, this species can only parasitize a select few species of ants, not just any ant species. Myrmica rubra, the European fire ant, and Myrmica scabrinodis, the peat marshland ant, are some of the only species of ants this butterfly is able to prey upon and complete its life cycle with. And this is why this butterfly is so sensitive. Not only does it require the presence of a great burnet plant, an uncommon plant that grows in certain grasslands, but on top of that they also require the presence of certain species of ants in these grasslands as well. One caterpillar can eat up to 250 ant larvae in its lifetime. Each ant colony can barely sustain one caterpillar. This species was native to my country, but went extinct and was never seen again since the 1970s. But in other parts of Europe, they can still be relatively common. Decades later, the government decided to import and reintroduce these butterflies to this natural reserve, the Moorputten. Unfortunately, it is too early in the season to find any of these butterflies. They only fly in June and August. If you want me to return to this swamp in summer so I can film them for you, please let me know in the comments. If I have enough time and budget, I would come back in less dark and cold times and find this rare species for you. All right. Time to go back into the swamp. Finally, the sun started to shine a little bit, but it was too late, since half the day was already over.
Funny thing about the Netherlands is that historically it used to be more or less of a swamp. That is before we humans drained all the water. Swamps are kind of useless to us and agriculture, our civilization. But most of the Netherlands is below sea level. So it's understandable most of it was actually a peat bog before we drained the water and turned a lot of it into dry landmass. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there is a very nice bird call here. In a few seconds I'm about to show you a very nice bird call. The call of the common nightingale, the Sikinia megarincos. It is a migratory insectivorous species uh, breeding in forest and shrub in Europe. Before I stop talking and finally let you listen to the audio, I will take a moment to thank my friend Owen. You see, Owen, he brought some expensive audio equipment with him since he is knowledgeable about music and audio. Owen is often secretly behind the scenes or in the background of my outdoor videos, but he does not like to be in the spotlight and he has no interest in engaging with the audience. And we will respect his wishes, so often I film myself as if I am the only person there in my videos with him behind the scenes as my cameraman. Though he dislikes being in the spotlight on YouTube, I guess I can still thank him for his efforts. Thanks, bro. All right, people, let's go a little bit deeper into the swamp.
is om te zien paarden. Ja? Dat moet ik ook even filmen. Well, that was it, ladies and gentlemen. This is more or less the end. I think it was a very interesting day and we saw a lot of cool stuff. But it was also a disappointment because this is such a cold spring. The butterflies and cool insects are nowhere to be seen. Time to get some food and go home and try again for another episode. I hope you enjoyed it. So, time to get some of my favorite food. What do you think it is? Guess what I have here, people? Vindaloo. Not many people know this, but my favorite food is actually Indian food. If you want to wake me up in the middle of the night, guys, give me Indian food. What I really like about this is how it has so many ingredients. Like it really has a lot of flavor. I spent a lot of money on bus tickets to make these videos. My channel is demonetized by YouTube and I gain absolutely nothing from uploading this. Apart from the funds that I raise through donations, which make this channel possible. If you like this content and want to su see more, support us on Patreon, Ko-Fi, PayPal or via other means. And only then I can show you more cool places in my country. This is how I can afford all my high quality cameras, equipment and free time. Especially the equipment part is kind of important. And when it comes to equipment ladies and gentlemen, here we have one problem. This is the tripod that I use to film all my videos. When I film outdoors, this is what I use to mount my camera on. But as you can see, it cannot stand up because one of the legs is irreparably broken off. So... That sucks. That means I'm gonna have to buy a new tripod. But today I can, because of all the people who donated to my channel. And stuff like this happens all the time behind the scenes. It is your contributions who make videos like this possible, because I need the equipment and time to film.